Hi, and welcome back to Storytime with Nana Lynn and Glow. Today, I'm going to record three stories from my childhood. Your parents might remember Sergeant Preston and Yukon King. Well, I remember Sky Chief and Sergeant Preston and King were on it. So, today, let's see, this was bought for me in 1962. So, here we go. Sergeant Preston's scarlet coat was the only spot of bright color in the lonely country. Sitting astride his handsome black horse, Rex, and leading a second horse by a long rein, he climbed through the thick woods to a high point in the hills. His wonder dog, Yukon King, lifted his head and sniffed into the wind. Below them flowed the blue-gray Yukon River, on the banks of which rose a group of dome-shaped huts. A kayak or skin boat landed beneath them, and an Eskimo with bow and arrows climbed quickly up the trail the Mountie had just taken. Sergeant Preston had not seen the caribou bull that the Eskimo was tracking until the animal moved. Its gray-brown fur blended perfectly into the moss and dried grass. But all of a sudden, the bull caught the man scent of the hunter and made a leap across the rocks. The Eskimo let go his arrow. Oh my, wow, I'd forgotten what these books are like. Um, let's see. The buck, wounded, whirled around and made for his enemy. The attack was swift. The hunter was about to be tossed on the great sharp antlers when Sergeant Preston's rifle rang out. The huge animal shot through the heart, rolled over the bank into the ravine. The dazed Eskimo scrambled to his feet and looked up into the face of the Mountie. Wow. Sergeant Preston, he cried. His wide face creased with joy. I am a guk. The village is in need of meat, and you come shoot the caribou for us. Well, not exactly, the sergeant smiled. I am on the trail of two fur thieves who call themselves Kirk and Turk. They robbed your neighboring village of valuable white fox furs. Did you, by any chance, give these men shelter? We did, a guk nodded. How could we know they were thieves? But now I drag the caribou to the boat. There will be plentiful help when I land. Thank you, Sergeant. Just a moment, Sergeant Preston called out. It is safer to hunt caribou with a rifle. Why do you use a bow and arrow? Because, Sergeant Preston, a gook explained, the two evil ones took all our ammunition with them. They even tossed their own caps aside for two of our fur hoods. Their greed has carried them closer to the law than they think, the Mountie said. I'll have a look at those caps. Sergeant Preston rode into the camp of Agook's gentle people. The whole village came out to meet him. The little children glued their eyes to his tight scarlet coat, admired the trousers with the gold stripe, and stared diligently and delightedly at his, at his shiny black boots. Shouts erupted his welcome as Agook arrived with the caribou and told the story of the Mountie's part in the hunt. The women crowded around, ready to skin and cut up the fresh meat. Sergeant Preston was invited into a tent. He sat down on some sweet-smelling willow twigs. The men squatted in front of him and smoked. The thieves, they said, had been gone but six hours. I shall follow them at once, the Mountie promised. One of you may ride with me to identify the men. I am the one to go, cried a gook. <clears throat> The sergeant saved my life with his gun, and I shall take along my bow and arrows and perhaps save his. See, sergeant, here are the two caps that the evil ones cast away. A few minutes later, outside the tent, Sergeant Preston called King to him. King sniffed the caps, growling deep in his throat. The trail would be as clear to him with his keen scent as though it had been carefully marked. Do we make camp? A gook said. No. We must reach the thieves' camp, Sergeant Preston replied. They are only six hours ahead of us, and they are burdened with the heavy load of skins. But a short rest will refresh us. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
The two men and the animals drank, off, drank from a spring nearby, and Agook shared his meat with Sergeant Preston and King. Suddenly, King began to run in circles about a small mound of earth. Agook ripped at it with his knife. The soil was in loose layers piled over something. The furs, cried Agook. The evil ones hid three big rolls of hides here so they could go faster. They will return for them. We have only to wait. I could make us a blind with willows. My book does not much cooperate today. It's old. No, said Sergeant Preston. My job is to first get my men. The furs can be recovered later. Place the turf over the rolls of hides again, Agook, and let's get going. Which way, King? The dog started off in an easterly direction. Agook held back. King must be wrong, Sergeant, he said. I can see footprints leading into the water of this little stream that joins the Yukon. <clears throat> While you were replacing the turf, Agook, Sergeant Preston replied, King was busy snipping over those same footprints. It seems the men backtracked, just in case we came this way. King and I, in our earlier days, followed such leads. Now we look for more con a more continuous trail. I trust King. Shaking his head, Agook, nevertheless, mounted his horse, and the two men followed the dog across the rocky ground. At the edge of the swamp, King stopped a low growl warning his master that the enemy was close at hand. A gook rode up beside Sergeant Preston's horse, whispering, I smell campfire smoke. They put out the fire after they cooked their supper so the flames couldn't be seen, but the fire still smolders. Dismount, Sergeant Preston ordered. We'll leave the horses here. A gook was as used to Sergeant Preston was as used as Sergeant Preston was to creeping through the woods without so much as making a sound. King was just as noiseless. The three moved toward the smoldering campfire like shadows. In the faint light of the ashes, Sergeant Preston made out the forms of the two men lying side by side. He drew his gun and stepped forward. I arrest you, Kirk and Turk, he cried, in the name of the crown. The two men leaped to their feet with wild shouts. Revolvers gleamed in their hands. They had been playing possum. The first man lifted his gun to aim at the scarlet coat, just as King jumped him. At the same moment, the sergeant's shot rang out, knocking the gun from his hand. The force of the dog sent him reeling. The second man took more careful aim, shouting, I'll get him. Just as he was ready to fire, an arrow whizzed out of the darkness, knocking the gun from his hand. A gook helped, leapt out on him, pinning him to the ground. The first man begged piteously, Call off your dog! Call off your dog! Sergeant Preston ordered King back and told a gook to pick up the guns. He kept the men covered as they staggered to their feet, arms upraised. You will be marched to the nearest fortress, said Sergeant, to pay for your thefts and your attempt on my life. And this case is closed. The case was closed for Sergeant Preston, but now for a gook and the inland Eskimos. They later brought in the stolen white fox furs and received a large reward. Proud indeed they were to have as their friends Sergeant Preston of the Yukon and his wonder dog, Yukon King. I hope you enjoyed that story, my young friends, my old friends, all my friends. I used to love this story. My mom used to read this to me many, many times. I'd say again, again, again. And finally she would say, bedtime. I'm sorry, you're in bed now. You go to sleep and you dream about King. Well, I have always wanted a husky, but I have found out that huskies are now too energetic for me. So I guess I'll still have to dream about Yukon King and Sergeant Preston. All right, guys, we'll see you in the very next video.